welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we've got hunting YouTube Hello Charlie and news of a man who catches fish with his hair. We're banging heads together. Roy Lupton's showing how to boil out a roebuck. First time off to Ireland where we're after a salmon, a stag and a grouse with a pop star. We're in Ireland. We have 12 and a half hours of daylight. We need a grouse, we need a salmon, we need a stag and the luck of the Irish to complete the ONAB. The man facing this great sporting challenge is Chris DeMargery, one of the world's greatest saxophone players. He hits the big time with Steve Winwood, but for most of his career he's performed with his good friend Mick Hucknell in Simply Red. I've never heard him sing bad, ever, regardless of what happened the night before. <laughs> in 2005, Chris and Mick bought the Glenmore estate in Donegal, which includes the River Finn, one of the most productive salmon rivers in Ireland. It has grouse, deer and a link with the Barons Court estate across the border in Tyrone, Northern Ireland, owned by the Hamilton family. They are the Dukes of Abercorn. Chris and Mick are the Dukes of Earl. But it is quite incredible, Charlie. I, mean, I spend most, you know, pretty much nearly every day up in the hills one way or another. As a boy, Chris wanted to be a gamekeeper, but sage advice from TV star Phil Drabble pointed him in a different direction. A direction that has now given him the means to come back to his roots. And he just sort of looked down at me and he says, listen here, young man. He said, old money is running out. He said, most of these shoots now are syndicated. He said, so a position as a gamekeeper, you know, it's not secure. So I was, hmm. So he said, is there anything else in life that you want, you know, that you like doing? I said, well, actually, I don't mind playing saxophone. So I've just started to learn to play. And he said, well, get on with that. He said, and see how you get on. He said, as you get older. <laughs> He said, then, uh, you know, you can pay and go and do it yourself, sort of thing. Anyway, unfortunately, he passed away really before I, he could have seen what, what happened, you know. But uh, that hey, is fantastic. You turn into one of the world's most successful musicians. Would you have been one of the world's most successful gamekeepers? Uh, probably. <laughs> I'd like to think so. <laughs> The cockerel sounds the start of the ONAB. It's not a time of day that musicians tend to see very often from this end. It's jolly early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do today? Oh gosh, uh, we're going to attempt to catch a salmon, shoot possibly a, a, a brace of grouse, and then on to deer, and hopefully get a stag. Is this, are you calling this an a McNab or an O'Nab or a Paddy Nab or something like that. It's a McTired. <laughs> a McWorn out. We leave the lodge and first stop is the River Finn and it's a beautiful spot. While Chris works the river, I chat with Sim. It's feast or famine with us, you know. If you hit the time right um, around, let's say, end of June, um, we have been known up to, to, to sort of get, you know, 10 plus fish per person. Uh, I think our record day this year was uh, two of our season rods, Kerry Hardy and Andrew McGall had 27 fish in about four and a half hours and they just hit the run absolutely dead on. Situation report so far? Uh, not bloody good, seen a few um, but they're not taking as such. Maybe it's temperature or maybe it's me, uh, I don't know, but I'm going to try again. This is the graveyard. So why is it called the graveyard? because it's next to a graveyard. Unfortunately, there's not much life in the river either, and it's time to move. We're off to Glenmore's other salmon stream, the Reelin, a much more exposed piece of water that needs stalking. Chris is an accomplished salmon fisherman, learning his trade in Iceland, where he used to escape from the fast pace of touring to guide clients. Iceland is very much, you know, the sort of, well, it's the education centre, really, because you're seeing everything. You can see the salmon. You can watch their reaction to, you know, pace of fly. Because the water's safe. Yeah, size of flies, whatever. Yeah, it's gin clear. And being guiding, it was the best, you know, probably you've seen it doing camera work. You know, sometimes you're in the best seat in the house. I spent those years just literally st studying their behavior, watching them, and it fascinated me. On stretch of water number two, the pressure is starting to build, but Chris is feeling feisty. I'm not gonna give in. I never give in with salmon. Well, time is ticking away. It's 11.30am with nothing on the board. Sim goes off to make bacon sandwiches, but... 
So on a day when you've really got to keep a move on, you know, and what's one thing you don't want to do? Lose your keys. Yeah. Or have your ghillie take your keys away. Okay, shall we film him coming back? I think we should. So it's back to the ranch for a quick and very welcome bacon sandwich and next on the list is grouse. So for, a, for an Irish McNabb, as we are attempting today, <laughs> will you be satisfied with any flying bird? Yeah, if a snipe gets up, it's going to get it. <laughs> but we'd love to, I mean, we should see a few uh, grouse up there. Um, we've left them alone pretty much for the last five years. Um, so this will be pretty much the first time we've lifted a gun to them. So we'll see how it goes. Good. Pointers. Carry on, carry on with the bacon sandwich. <laughs> Chris's characterful terrier, Reginald, is also keen on bacon sandwiches. He will follow the scent of a good sarnie right to the source, which in this case is the front seat of the Land Rover. However, Reggie is keenly aware of the perils faced by little dogs that thieve, and he knows he is on CCTV. With Reggie in the doghouse, we use a thoroughly more professional bratchet for the grouse. The setters look beautiful, sunlit on the moor, everything looks right. We just need a bird to show itself. Just one bird. With nothing in the bag and tired legs, it may be time to start to the blame game. In our sights is estate manager, Sim. All good things come to those who wait. Good luck. Good luck. Does that work with all of us? Every time, every time. Yeah, it'd be just too easy if we went out and did it all at once. So you've got to have a bit of an edge to it. You know, pressure. I work well under pressure. It's a long, long walk. The setters set, but tail wagging usually means it's a cold trail. So why do these handlers stick to a breed that has been all but replaced by pointers in Scotland? Right for this crowd, I would say, because the scarcity of the game. And they'll hurt and they'll go. Where other dogs will get fed up, they'll go until they're done. But no, on rough ground, all weathers. So it's stamina? Stamina. Yeah. And, and that, that touch of madness that'll keep them going yeah. when other dogs will have the sense to stop. What you need in rough terrain with scarcity of game, you know. Everyone is doing their best to keep their spirits up, but this moor looks bereft of grouse. With just a few hundred yards of moor left, the unluckiest grouse in Ireland breaks cover and finally, finally it's game on and we're chasing the tail of the O'Nab. I'm so pleased, you have no idea. Pleased, very happy. Is that what's supposed to happen? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Good man, Chris. Well done, mate. Oh, Everyone yeah. gathers to admire the bird. Right, so I'll tell you what, it's the hardest I've ever worked for a grass in my life. Your luck's going to change the way you are. This is all a bit more rock and roll. So, how did Chris go from talented musician to touring the world? Uh, I was very, very fortunate that I got picked up by Steve Winwood, which then sort of started the whole ball rolling. So, I pretty much owed most of it to Steve, who's actually a very, very good sportsman himself. Fine show. Very fine show. Well, that is a very relieved Chris there. Uh, we got the grouse in the bag, just as we were hoping. Now, just a small matter of the stag and the fish. Back across the border at Barron's Court, the water is low, but this is a river where you can catch fish in low water. So finally we're catching fish, but catching a trout does not mean a salmon will follow. Then Chris is in. Grassing a salmon tempted by a sunray shadow is by no means a dead cert. Don't be fooled by the big take. You lose as many as you hook, nor is it easy for the cameraman. I fall in. I just knew there was fish in there. I wasn't 100% convinced we'd get one, but I could feel it. Once that trout took, I thought, OK, they're seeing this. And there's no logic to that, because the trout taste has no effect on the salmon taking, does it? Nothing at all. But you just felt better? Yeah, I just suddenly I thought, okay, this is, you know, I felt a bit more, the whole pool felt a little bit more fishy. Is it about confidence? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, if you go in that pool believing you won't oh, catch anything, so you please. bloody well won't. The most welcomed salmon in the whole of Ireland. <laughs> Telling me. <laughs> Jeez. Right, stag. Robert walks us up the track and tries calling in a stag. It's off to the high seat and it's make or break time. There are seeker deer on the ground, but nothing with antlers. Then the Emerald Isle magics up a stag for us. The 
the strike is good. The stag is 20 yards beyond the fence and incredibly, we've done our Irish McNabb. My God, Charlie, you did it, mate. That is bloody incredible. I mean, everything was good as well. Big grouse, big salmon, and a big beast. Everything was perfect. What are you going to do with it? This will go straight to the game larder at Baron's Court. Yeah. And, uh, will you ask for the antlers? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll keep the head on this one. I, I mean, it's not every day you're going to do a McNabb, is it? <laughs> I don't think it's every day I'd want to do a McNabb. <laughs> I'm spent. There's only one thing left, and that's the pub. Chris has made it in the music industry, and now he is making it as a provider of great shooting and fishing. Um, will you do it again? Now I've had a night's sleep. Yeah, I think I would. I think I could, yeah, I could try that again. There's been something that's been on my mind for a long time that I've wanted to do again, just to see if it's possible. And it was genuine. It was a genuine, you know, dust or dawn job, and we did it. For more about shooting and fishing at Glenmore and Barons Court, if money's not too tight to mention, visit glenmorerivers.com. And if Chris didn't make that abundantly clear, we really did work very hard for that ONAB. Now, we make lots of films for celebrities, and if you would like to see one of them, you can click on the screen that's appeared up there behind me. Let's go to somebody not so well known. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. One of the Miss America 2014 candidates is a tattooed army sergeant who enjoys skydiving, boxing, vehicle mechanics and bow hunting. Crowned Miss Kansas 2013, 22-year-old Teresa Vale made the top 10, losing out to Miss New York in the final. London 2012 Olympic double trap gold medalist Peter Wilson has been accused of illegal whale hunting. He was travelling to the World Championships in Peru to coach British junior James Dedman. Peruvian customs officers at Lima Airport saw James's shotgun and immediately detained Peter and James for being illegal whale hunters. A state school in the south of England has attracted praise from shooting organisations after it took a group of 8 to 11 year olds to try shooting at a playground. Head teacher at West Rise Junior School in Eastbourne, Mike Fairclough, said the day shooting in July, which was organised by Basque, helped educate children about the food chain and instilled skills such as self-discipline and commitment to a task. The Angling Trust has appointed fishing pioneer George Stevenson as its new chairman. With several decades' experience of managing safari and fishing businesses around the world, he spent 25 years in Africa running safari camps before setting up the successful Roxton Bailey Robinson Sporting Agency business. He's also chairman of the Save the Rhino campaign. It's bad news for the RSPCA, which is facing turmoil. A leaked memo from an RSPCA deputy chairman says that senior figures fear that an exodus of disillusioned staff could leave it with just a rump of people who cannot get a job elsewhere. The organisation has directed hundreds of thousands of pounds towards taking hunters to court in recent months. And finally, is it fake or is it real? A lad called Jake with long hair puts a hook with a worm on it and in this video catches a fish. Will this ever catch on? Probably not. As a technique, it's on the fringe. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now let's find out what everybody else has been up to around the world. It's Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello Charlie, it's me dragging the East Blue once again from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And even though duck season just started, I sadly don't have any footage for you, but I should be getting a few within the next couple of weeks. Should be a lot of fun. Hello Charlie, this is Nick Rudisol, and I'm here in Oxford, Ohio, doing some duck hunting. You guys have a good one. Hello Charlie, my name's Jack Fellows, I'm in Shropshire, currently walking a load of pheasants back in the rain. Great. Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. 
Now, the legendary Roy Lupton, the Theseus, the last samurai, has brought us many videos on how to shoot, stalk, call in and round up a roebuck. Here's how to boil out its head. Not everyone is a bone collector, usually because they prefer not to be single. I'm not having that thing in my house, or will you stop stinking the place out comes with the territory. But if you're willing to buy your way out of trouble, or you are indeed single and happy, boil and bleach away. And here's Roy to show you how. First, here's what can go wrong. This is one of the worst examples of a skull that I've had back. And this is a, a kudu that I shot over in South Africa. And you can see they really have done a terrible job on it. It's split, wrecked. Um, there's not a lot you could do with that to, to rectify it, unfortunately. A few mistakes there, all of which we'll try and show you how to avoid. Now it's time to clean the heads while the water boils. Roy has thawed two roebucks overnight. So the most important thing to do before you start boiling is to obviously make sure that all the skin is off because trying to do it, boil it with the skin on really does become very tiresome. So again, you've got to cut round and try and get as much as of the flesh off as you possibly can. And all we're going to do is just bend the knife in and cut up along the pedicles. Again, keeping it tight in and then cutting up into the base of the coronets. Roy does his best to clean the heads, but don't bother with the eyes. They're easier to sort out after the boiling. Roy removes the jawbone, which he'll also boil and bleach. They hold lots of information about your deer. So here we've got one skinned off head and one jawbone. Again, just got a little bit of excessive meat left on here. Yeah, just run the knife up there and trim that off. But again, making sure to be very careful with your fingers. We head outside and it's a quick dip in some cold water, taking care not to damage the nasal bones. Just give them a quick dip in, just take any excessive blood out that we can do. Um, again, just be very careful when you're immersing them in water, even like this, just to keep the coronets above the water, if you can, when you're leaving them overnight, because you don't want any of the scum just collecting in the coronets there, because it, you, it, once, once you start boiling, then you don't want to be cleaning the coronets off because you'll lose colour. Normally he'd soak them like this overnight, but today it's a quick in and out. Drop the head in, and again I want to suspend it, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the water level up to the coronets rather than push it down, because if we push it down, all that's going to happen is we're going to be pushing the nasal bone against the base. With the water boiling, we can add the heads and jaws and something a little extra. Normally it's bicarbonate of soda, but needs must. It's going to have to be a finished power tab and see if that works. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Oh, that's made it bubble. That's interesting. So, but you can see all the scum starting to form on the top here. But whatever you do, don't think it's soup. Roy regularly checks the water level. It needs to boil for 25 minutes, enough time for a cuppa in a very special mug. After 25 minutes, they're done, and Roy has made a slight boo-boo. He says it's probably best to cut the skull before it gets piping hot and the bones get brittle. When you're working on the heads, bear in mind that all of this sinew and everything dries on incredibly quickly if you keep it out for too long. So you want to try and get it all done and off as quickly as you can as soon as you take it out from boiling. So we'll just try and cut through in here. As I say, I'm not sure if this is going to work because the skull might be a little bit fragile. I've got to try and remember my woodworking classes. And there we go. So we've met up. And you can see from the back there, we've got quite a good line. And it should lay pretty much flat. Luckily, he gets away with it and the skull is starting to look the part. While it's piping hot, it's vital that all the leftover flesh is removed, including the eyeballs. It might be worth investing in some dental equipment to assist with the smaller orifices. Pick up all your bits as well as you go because the dogs love nothing more than eating all the bits and then regurgitating it in your living room later on in the evening. So. like horses' hooves, they're drawn to them. With all the obvious bits gone, Roy needs to secure the head. A drill and four well-positioned holes and a piece of wood make it easy. And then all I'm going to do is put the antlers in like that, and that will act as a bit of an anchor point for when we're cleaning. 
Roy dons shades at the Mac, looking like an extra from the Matrix, he power hoses the heads. Be very careful when you're pressure washing because you want to get rid of all of the material up that's tucked up under the coronet. So we're going to tip him back over again and wash quite heavily under here, but you don't want to be taking any colour from the coronet. It's an effective tool and all that's left to do is the bleaching. This is the most surprising tip of all. This gem came from his hairstylist. Yes, Roy's hair is professionally styled and possibly dyed. With the liquid peroxide, if you just pour it on, it, it'll roll off. Whereas with the cream peroxide, it stays on there and froths up. You just pour it on, make sure it's in all the nooks and the crannies, leave it overnight and wash it off in the morning. Obviously, when you're handling peroxide, just be aware because it is a bleach. I'm just gonna tip him upside down and again being very careful within this process making sure that we don't get any on the antlers because if you spill any on the antlers it will take the colour completely off there. All of that in there like so, making sure you get it all in there and again a lot in the brain cavity. You want to make sure that you build it up just over the under the coronets there. That's how you get all that bleached all down the nasal bones on the eye sockets all the bone there, up into the eye cavities, but we did that when we had it upside down. And that's pretty much it. So all we'll do is leave that overnight, wash it off in the morning and leave it to dry and away you go. It's vital to keep this stuff away from animals, children and tell everyone in the house what you're up to, but they'll probably work that out for themselves. Thank you, Roy. Now from one living legend to another, Max Hunt is still on his way to Kazakhstan. We now made it to Kazakhstan. We are in Uralsk, it's the first bigger city that you enter when you come into Kazakhstan. The plan is to meet up with some guys here who can help us around and tell us some stuff and show us the city. And after that we want to go out and try to see if we can find the Saiga antelope and see if we can film it. Very difficult, but we'll see what we can do. Before we went here, we went to uh, um, Chernobyl. And Chernobyl was very mind-breaking for me. It was crazy in there. It's the first time ever. <laughs> I experience fear like that. It's a scary place and I don't think I'll ever go there again because it's it really really influenced on me. We saw some evidence of wildlife in there, we saw uh, tracks of wolves and moose and everything and I was quite surprised how nature had taken over in there again. That's all from this week's uh, Max Hunt Asian tour and uh, stay tuned and watch my latest hunt from Germany. It's a hunt on a black robot I did together with Michael Michael from Germany and thanks a lot Michael for the nice trophy you presented to me. Enjoy and stay tuned on Fearsport Channel. See you later. Next week I'm back again. Thank you Max and we'll be showing Max's black buck hunt on next week's show. You'll be able to see all Max's adventures including his experiences in Chernobyl on his own show on Field Sports Channel on his return. Next, the map that matters. David is back with Calendar. Welcome to Field Sports Britain's Calendar in association with Basque with dates for your diary, facts for Facebook, smartphone and post-it notes. Temperatures are expected to rise at the end of the week with brighter weather over the weekend. The autumn equinox is on Sunday the 22nd of September, but it's the spring equinox down under. We have a full moon tomorrow night, Thursday the 19th of September, and thereafter it'll be waning gibbous. All in all, it'll be good weather for ducks, and the wildfowling season is well underway now, with birds arriving from the continent and further afield. The odd woodcock is also being spotted. On to grouse shooting, and although some have been cancelled in both England and Scotland, the season is generally going well. The main complaint is that birds have been small, which makes the end of September a prime time to go this year. Plenty of fun shooting events across the UK on the Basque calendar in the coming week. We kick off in Wales with the Basque 410 World Championships at Mid Wales Shooting Centre in Powys this weekend. That's not all. There are ladies' clay shooting days in Gloucestershire and the Bob Valentine Shooting School in North Wales. And there are Basque Young Shots days at Rise Home College in Lincolnshire, Clevedon in Somerset and Dubridge Clay Sports Club in Derbyshire. For more, visit the Basque website and click on the Events tab, basque.org.uk. Well, let's see what the world's been up to this week in hunting, shooting and fishing. It is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting, and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. Air Gun Nation is a new air gunning channel. He does things like accuracy, rifle overviews, pellet comparisons, and here he is making a baking soda vinegar bomb. Handy for cookery terrorists the world over. Now, here's one I hemmed and hawed about before putting it in because he contacted me and I kind of felt sorry for him. Air Gunner FL Camera is carrying out an amateur ballistics test of some of the many 177 pellets on the market. He is a lot more pro than Air Gun Nation. He's older and he is almost as annoying as me. No, don't be kind, he is. Of course, as any fool know, the beating heart of world air gunning is in the UK, and that's why Ed Gun USA has been here in the last week. Yes, I do mean Ed Gun. Ted's holdover, top of the air gun pops, the Piccadilly Kid, the PC Pista. Air Gun Gear Show nabbed him to look at Day State's air guns. Fast forward to minute number four to see him in action, but it could be air guns he is comparing, it could be ripe fruit or ladies' lingerie. This is Mr. T Holdover, and he is fab. Moving into fishing, Mike Peely, aka Yak Fisher UK, sends me one of his kayak fishing videos where he is fishing for sharks. Sharks? Well, taupe, which are a kind of small, angry Welsh shark. Love this film. Andy Blythe is into a large salmon. In March 2000, England A centre Andy was injured playing for sale in an away game at Saracens. He spent 11 months in hospital and has recovered enough to live a fairly normal life. He can drive a car, he has a job looking out for foul play in Premiership Rugby games, he has a wonderful other half called Lucy, and he can continue his lifelong passion, salmon fishing, though problems with movement mean Playing this one is a struggle. Revax Films 2011 is from Spain. I have featured them before and they are here again because they are among the best in the world, having brought out their latest brag video. It's about ibex hunting. The music is a bit crash bang wallop, but the photography is extraordinary. Now we have touched on seeker deer in this week's episode. Let's go back to where they come from. The northern Japanese island of Hokkaido is stuffed with a seeker subspecies and in this film a New Zealand production company is following a resident hunter on a quest for trophy stags. Finally, there's a big new trend for people to give up their old-fashioned daily Mail and The Times, and seek out their news on edgy youthful websites such as Vice.com, The Daily Beast, and Clash Daily. While the old fashioned media is dull and urban, these new news gatherers take the world for what it is, and they are always happy to feature hunting. Say, so forgive it for being a bit TV showy, but Clash Daily's Hunting Monster Bucks and Eating Live Crickets, where they are after a monster white tail buck in the US of Yippie Kai A, ain't half bad, featuring as it does the gorgeous single white female Regis Giles from GirlsJustWannaHaveGuns.com. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8 send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well we are back next week and if you are watching this on YouTube please hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our web page and you will be able to follow us on Facebook or like us on Twitter or vice versa or scroll down to the bottom of the page and pop your email address into our constant contact form and we will email you every week about our program that's out 7 p.m. Wednesday, UK time. This has been Field Sports Britain with a lot of help from Ireland.